Okay, good evening. Tonight we're tying one of two shrimp patterns in my father's recipe box. I'm not 100% sure if I have the full recipe because it goes one, two, and four on the cards. The last card is not numbered, so I'm thinking the drawing might be three. So it comes out pretty good though. I try to follow along. I do take some liberties on this one. The dubbing is going to be different. The hook I'm not going to bend with pliers as he showed in his drawing. So let's get to it. The hook I have in a vise is a clink hammer style hook from the fly shack size 10 and the thread I'm using is Danville 140. I had just enough on that spool for this one and maybe one more. The weight I'm adding is 0 0.015 lead. I did 10 wraps and I did 5 wraps on top. Right about the middle of the uh, hook shank. Start your thread in front of the weight and then wrap several wraps behind it and then cut away your tag end. And continue to wrap all the way down the length of the hook to about where you can comfortably wrap and then wrap it back up, wrap it back up through the lead securing it. The tail material that we're going to use is a pinch of this olive mallard flank. Take a pinch of the barb rolls, pulling them straight out so all the tips are aligned, and remove them from the stem. Place your tail on the hook shank nearest you and as you wrap away from you slightly pull the tail towards you and it will end up right on top. And go ahead and secure your tail. You can see this thread is fighting me. It's near the end of the spool and it's pretty flat right now. So I have to keep on spinning it up to make it work. The next material we're going to tie in is this four pound test monofilament. We're going to use it for the ribbing. And now we'll tie in this thin skin from Waspy. What I do is just cut a quarter inch section off the bottom, cut a little tip to it, and tie it in. My father's recipe did not call for this thin skin. It did call to cement the top of the fly. This is just a good substitute, and I'm sure they didn't have this waspy thin skin back then, which I don't recall it until several years ago. Again, cut a little tip, lay it on the shank near you, and start wrapping it down, bending it to the top of the hook and tie it in. And try to tie it all the way down to where you started that tail. That way you don't have any thread gap. 
Our next material is his Hare's Ice Dub from Hairline. His original recipe had multiple blends of different furs that primarily came out in this olive color. So I'm kind of making it a little easier here by adding just this one product alone. It's already blended rather nicely as you'll see. And after adding a little dubbing wax, take your material, spin it on the thread, and what I did there is take my fingers and dip them into a Dixie cup to damp them slightly. That way it helps you spin the dubbing material on to make a nice noodle. And add more dubbing as needed. You want to make a nice thick body here. Basically just take your dubbing on, spin it, let your fingers make a nice noodle and wrap it up and repeat as necessary. and apply the dubbing to about two eye lengths behind the eye. And I will take the thin skin, pull it up over the body of the fly and tie it off. Make sure you pull it, stretch it out a little bit so it's nice and tight. Give it several wraps to secure it and now we'll take our monofilament and wrap over the body to segment the body and this will give it a little more durability also. And when you get to the front, go ahead and tie it off with using several wraps. Go front and behind the monofilament, making sure it doesn't get away from you. And go ahead and trim away the monofilament, and now you can trim away the excess thin skin. Save that piece for your next fly. Now is a good time to take your dubbing brush and brush out the bottom to make it a little more buggy. And now we're going to add the beard from the same mallard flank feather as the tail. You want to align the tips of the barbules and pull it straight off the stem. You want just about a pinch full, not very many, maybe a dozen or so barbules. Your first wrap, you want to pinch between your fingers and pull the thread straight down. And what this does is it keeps it aligned right on the bottom of the hook shank. Go 
Go ahead, cut away your excess and give it a few more thread wraps to make sure it's secure. But be mindful, you don't want to move it around. It's already perfectly on the bottom. Take your whip finish tool and give it a couple good whips. That one moved on me a little bit, so we're going to do it another time. You want that thread to be rotating on top of the previous thread wrap. That's a good whip finish right there. And now I add a little Sally Hansen's to secure the head of the fly. Make sure you clean out the eye that way on the stream you don't have any issues trying to tie it up. And there you go. You got yourself a nice little shrimp pattern using some of my father's recipe. I took some liberties with it. What I have in my hand is called a Junior Tie Right. It is something every fly fisherman should have. I have one on my pack. It's great for holding those small dry flies as you're tying the tippet on. And again, thanks for watching. If you liked it, give me a th subscribe. Stay safe out there. See you next time.